Hello YouTube, Jerry Kirkpatrick here and in the last video of the five modified vice grips I got uh, several comments on the chisel holding pair of vice grips that I made. Uh, several said that they wanted to make them and also a few said that they thought that they were the most useful of all of the five. The pick set that I made also were, uh, were commented on. But in this video, since some of you want to make a pair of the chisel holding vice grips, that's what this video is going to be about. And the vice grip that I used uh, to make this set of vice or uh, chisel holding was the 7CR uh, in vice grip, and they also have a 7R, which is a straight jaw. But I like the curved jaw because with the straight jaw, they are only parallel in one position. With the curved jaw, you can use them on almost anything, square, round, and uh, I just find the curved jaw more useful. If you want to go up a size, you can go to the tens. And uh, if you need more gripping force or uh, holding larger items, you can step up to the next size vice grip. The vice grip that I'm going to be using, which is not a vice grip, it's a Milwaukee, I went to two different uh, hardware stores here in Willits and none of, n neither one had uh, the vice grip brand in the size that I wanted. So what I'm going to use is the Milwaukee brand. Whichever one you can find, uh, even if it's an off-brand, they're still going to work. The material that I'll be using for this and what you'll need to get is two pieces of quarter by three quarter, two pieces about four inches long, three and a half, something like that, and two pieces of eighth by half angle iron. And you may not have a quarter by three quarter, but I'm sure you have an old piece of scrap quarter inch material. You can even use angle iron and cut two strips off of that. Any, any material that you have that's quarter inch thick, make your quarter by three quarter pieces. Also with the angle iron, you can use two pieces of eighth inch and make a V. You know, put one larger piece, one smaller piece. Make it that way. If you have eighths by, well, this is two inch, cut it down. If you want to make these pliers, just find a way to get the material that is required to make them. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these out of the, uh, out of the packaging and I'm going to etch, acid etch, the plating off of just the jaws so when I weld I don't have to smell the fumes from the plating. So let's get all this tore down, get over on the uh, welding table and start making these things. So I have now removed all the plating from the jaws back to this area from the new set of vice grips which are Milwaukee and these are the originals that uh, you saw in the last video 
So we'll take some measurements of these and start laying out. The length of the jaw from where, it's, where it meets up to the pliers to the ends is about three inches. The angle iron starts back about three eighths of an inch and the width of the angle iron is three quarter. So let's get these pieces here. Now I've uh, painted these with dicum with uh, bluing so the marking will show up a little bit better for you. The first thing I'm going to do is I've got my scale set to three quarter and this is the eighth by half angle iron. I'm going to make a mark there. And there. So I'll be cutting these off, deburring the parts, and these will be ready to be welded onto the jaws. The next I have a one inch diameter flat washer that I want to make a radius on the end of each of the jaws. Those are like that. Now I want to mark back the three inches for the length where they will meet the jaws. I'm going to reset this to three eighths which gives me a starting point for the angle iron. Now here's a little trick that you might find useful. I have saved uh, pieces of different size material uh, that I've cut a 45 degrees. This was some quarter by two that I cut a 45 degree. This was some eighth by three and that I cut a 45 on. And what I use these for, I keep these in where my precision tools are. Uh, they're not precision by any means, but anytime I want to make a V cut, this is what I go to. I know that this is an inch and a half tall here and I want to make my V in the, in the jaw for the vi uh, angle iron. I want that to go in about a quarter of an inch. So I've got a piece that's a quarter of an inch shorter than the height here. You can see how that sticks out. Just put a clamp on there. I can slide this right up to that 3 8 line. And that's where I have to make that V cut for the angle iron to go in there. Just slide that over until I'm at that line. And right there is where it has to be cut out and the angle iron will sit down in, in that area. These little three quarter 
inch, uh, three quarter of an inch length of angle iron. So let me get these cut and these shaped and then we'll start laying out for the cuts that will start right here and follow both of the jaws. This one will be arched up. This one will follow this all the way to the end. So let me get these cut up and I'll be right back. So we now have the notching done and the radiuses put on the nose pieces here, on the nose of the pieces, and a couple of pieces of angle iron that are three quarter of an inch long. And you may ask why are we putting these pieces of angle iron in the snout, in the nose of these pieces? Well, if you don't have those, then when you clamp something, it may have a tendency to rack like that, especially if you're trying to twist something. Uh, the three quarter inch angle iron, or the eighth by half by half, is just kind of insurance that you keep your jaws in line. So uh, the way that I weld these up, I have a fence. This is just a piece of eighth by two by two angle iron. Clamp that down. I take a piece of eighth inch material, put it down there right up against the angle iron. Lay one of the small angle iron jaws up against there. Take a piece of quarter inch, place it there. This is three quarter, so we have a quarter, a quarter. That means that we have a quarter of an inch sticking out the other side. Clamp it, put one tack right here, then I can remove all of this, put another tack on the other side, and then weld it all the way around. And I'd love to show you how I do that, but I can't weld on paper. So let me get this broke down, I'll weld them up, and I'll bring you back when they are finished. So I now have both of the pieces of angle iron welded into the jaws, jaw extensions, I guess they are. And now it's time to mark and cut out the reliefs here for the top and bottom portion of the jaws on the, on the vice grips. So all we need is a piece of quarter inch material to keep it up the quarter inch uh, from the angle iron and a piece of three eighths bar stock for the spacing and that's to keep the jaws parallel and we have a piece of 3 8 round bar stock. We're going to put that in there and that keeps these aligned and this is where you will find out whether you have these pieces of angle iron welded in there straight. If not these are going to rack. So we have that all put together. going to clamp that, get everything up tight and flat, and then we take our pliers and get the nose of the pliers right on that three inch line.
and there we're ready. Now you take a pencil, silver pencil if you have one, and start right at the end of the jaw. Mark both sides. And now we have the area that is going to be removed there and there. So let me get this cut out and then I'll bring you back and we'll weld the jaws to the vice grip itself. So here we have both jaws, extensions, that have been bandsawed and ground. This is the first time I've used a grinder, an actual grinder in many years for anything other than sharpening a drill. And you notice this line right here, cutting on the bandsaw and it pulled it in and the bandsaw had its way with this jaw until I could get it turned off. So this is not a flaw, this is a feature because no other pair will have that mark in them. And that way I know these are mine. So I'm gonna set this back up just like I did before. Piece of 3 8 round to keep those lined up. Piece of 3 8 in here. Clamp that all together. Everything is nice and tight. Then I take my vice grips. Make sure that these jaws are flush on the table and I leave a little bit sticking out here and this is a piece of 3 8 square and I can slide that right in to make sure that this jaw is aligned with this gap so this is a little bit low I'll just take a wedge Bring that in until it's flush. I want this surface and the surface right there flush when I tack it together. I'll bring this one up until I get it flush. This one needs just a little bit more. So at this point everything is lined up. Uh, the jaw is straight. Here's my key keying into the uh, jaws there. This is flush, this is flush. Now I'll take and put a tack right here. I'll let that cool, turn it around, put another tack right here, let that one cool, and then I'll take it apart, all of this portion apart, and make sure of the alignment this way make sure that this is welded right down this spine of the vice grip and you can notice this pair <laughs> this is my original pair and you can see that they're bent off they've been hit with hammers they've been abused for the last 30 or 40 years but they still work just fine the main purpose for these is holding this particular punch. These two have been mates for you know, probably 25, 35 years. So this will be a, a pretty nice tool if you decide to make one for yourself. So let me get these tacked up and then welded and then I'll meet you over at the table. We can take a look at them when they're finished. Well, there you go. Uh, I put the old ones up here so you didn't think I just took the old ones and bead blasted them and 
made out like I did something. So here's the brand new ones with a larger center punch in there. If you didn't have anything to do this weekend, now you got something to do. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, ring the bell, give me a thumbs up. I do like coffee. See you later.